Hey guys, Edward Freitag back again for video number three in the series I'm doing on percussion accessories. Today we're going to do just a little brief video on finger cymbals. Some of the instruments that I'm going to use for you today are these right over here. So I've got right here a set from the Saroyan's uh, Finger Cymbal Company. These sound great. These are also made by Saroyan and uh, beautiful sounding, a little bit deeper than these. I've got a set here that I got from Meinl uh, that are very thick and have great sound to them. And then I have an actual set over here that came from Turkey. I think you'll really, really dig these. So we'll start with this particular set from Saroyan Finger Cymbal Company. Uh, this particular set is relatively bright, has a really nice top end shimmer. Notice that they're not exactly pitched the same, which is very desirable for finger cymbals. All right, I've got a second set here from Sarion. These should be a little bit deeper. Yes. The hand motion is to create vibrato. I hope that's coming through on the microphone. Yeah, beautiful sound. All right, we'll go now to the Minels. These are the ones that I originally said are relatively thick. And so consequently, they've, uh, uh, they're pitched pretty close and the thickness gives quite a bit of volume and the sound is relatively pure. Yeah, not too much vibrato there because the pitches are very close to one another. Beautiful sound though. And then we'll go to this final set that I'm gonna to use today. These came from Turkey, they're brass, and also really, really nice sounding instruments. Beautiful. All right, let's discuss a few techniques that we use when playing finger cymbals. I'm gonna use just one set uh, to demonstrate this rather than exhibiting it on, on all of the instruments. Um, this is one of the uh, Saroyan sets. And uh, generally, when playing the instrument, you'll notice I've, I've got them turned to where they're kind of crossed from each other. And I do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, I like, I like in its standard procedure to play edge to edge on the plates. So this kind of helps, uh, helps you actually not miss the plate. I've actually seen some players do this. They've tried to play edge to edge like this and unfortunately will miss the symbol about 90% of the time. But if you turn across, when you play that downstroke, it's very easy to get good contact and get a great sound edge to edge. All right? That's the general most accepted way to play the instruments. Now notice what I just did, you can actually dampen the instruments. If you need a, instead of a sustained sound, if you need a, just a little finger symbol uh, sound effect and you want it in and out, you can take it right out, just with the fingertips. So we can dampen either way. Now you can also do this. If you only wanna hear one of the instruments, you can actually, as soon as you play them, you can dampen one, and that way the audience or, or in the recording session, whatever the case may be, only one cymbal is actually playing. Notice the sound was really pure because only one plate was playing. Now I'm gonna do that again. So a lot of the dissonance is not there if that's what you're looking for. Again, here's both of them together. We get that dissonance. All right, I can dampen the right one. Now we're just hearing the left one. You can tell they're definitely different pitches, right? Cool. So we, we can dampen in any way we would like. We can use uh, the sound of only one symbol if that's what we're looking for. Now, um, although this is not considered correct technique, 
you can actually play them like you're playing a real set of crash cymbals and it simulates the sound that you would hear with a Turkish dancer or a belly dancer when they've actually got the plates mounted to their fingers and they're clanking them together, so to speak. You would actually hear this sound. And I've seen it written in many pieces, percussion ensembles particularly, I've seen it written to where uh, we use that technique. So the technique that uh, simulates the belly dancers, uh, I've actually used that in some ensembles of, of my own. Uh, one in particular, if I'm not mistaken, I think on flight to Turkey, there's a section in there where I've got several players playing finger cymbals, all playing different rhythms. And it's very intense rhythmically. And we're actually using that technique. So we kind of hear that flamming in there. All right, another quick technique. Sometimes players will like to do this. They will hold one, one plate like this and they'll do a downstroke like so, just catching the edges. This doesn't get quite as much volume as the edge to edge, but it's a cool technique. All right, something else we can do. You can take a triangle beater if you would like. And I've actually done this on, on several compositions, uh, particularly in percussion ensemble. Just holding the plate flat, you can take the triangle beater, play on the edge, just on one simple plate, or one single plate. You can do little edge crashes. Which is a little bit more violent way to play the instrument. It is a different sound though. Definitely a different sound. All right. And just as a closing technique, uh, we can also do quick decrescendos on the instrument by simply using the body as a shield, which cuts the sound to the audience. Let's do that again. Excellent. So there's some great finger symbol techniques for you and a little bit of discussion about the instruments themselves. And hopefully that'll be super, super helpful to you. Good to see you again. Segment four will be coming up sometime soon, and I believe that will probably be on triangles. Look forward to seeing you.